Hello. 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 Are you okay? Yeah. So let's go. First, a um, few words about me. Out, you guys. Okay, I can speak uh, loud, no, no problem. So, let's start again. Um, so, a few words about me. Um, my name is uh, Vincent Rivier. I, uh, I'm French and I, I live in Paris. And I'm currently working as software developer in University Paris 1, Panthéon, Sorbonne. And today we will speak about this thing. Who knows this computer? Yeah, very good. So this computer is the Atari ST. It's the um, first computer I, I had in 1992. The Atari ST was really a nice computer. You, you will see. Uh, and it can still be used today. We can do nice things. Um, I, have, I have a lot of slides today, but don't worry, you, you will have the, the PDF online. Okay, the Atari ST was based around the, the CPU 68000. Uh, it was very powerful when, when it was released in 1985. The Atari ST was um, famous about music, not because of its sound chip, because it was basi a basic one, but um, because of the MIDI plugs which was uh, on the computer. It was very popular for musicians. About, about storage, it used uh, the same floppies as PC, so, so it was very easy to, to make transfers, transfers between um, PC and Atari. What is the uh, operating system of the Atari ST? Well, it, well, it is um, the operating system, TOS, T-O-S. Some people say it was Framil op operating system because of the name of the Atari CEO. And, um, it looks like this. So uh, basically, you can see windows, icons, menus, everything as, um, as um, computers nowadays. This is um, low, resolu low resolution. It's mainly used by, uh, by games. Medium resolutions to, for using utilities. Or the high resolution in monochrome for utilities. It was very... Um, very, very nice to, to use. Here are a few Atari programs. Uh, for example, a dialogue-based program with uh, everything known, with buttons, uh, edit fields, um, everything. Windowed program, you can see um, a spreadsheet, a word processor, just like modern, uh, modern tools, like, like the same. Um, there was also some text mode applications, but you must know that um, Atari people use the, the mouse. Uh, they don't like text mode, and they don't like co command line. Of course, of course, there was uh, games, and this was a great one. And of course, demos, which were which were very very nice. Um, if you, in my opinion. The, um, the Atari ST had a, a GUI which was similar to early, earlier Macintosh. But the, the, the API was similar to MS-DOS, just like uh, short file names, uh, 8.3, etc. But it was, everything was much, much cleaner thanks to the 68 CPU. About the internals, basically you have, you have the hardware, then on top you have the BIOS, for low-level input-output. GEMDOS, which uh, handle memory, file systems, processes. Um, VDI, for low-level graphics, and more. AES, for the menus, Windows, Dialog, and the desktop for user interface. The three upper layers are called GEM. About programming, of course, BASIC was very popular then. And assembly language, because um, uh, BASIC was not very, uh, it was very nice, but uh, not, not very fast, so people started um, learning assembly language. Here is a simple sample, a simple hero world. 
C, the C language was not so much used because compiler was not um, as good as today. Um, and um, to compile a C program, you, need, we, you, you had to have a hard disk, and not everyone had hard disk. Um, here is a nice, a nice command line interface I used, but as I said, people didn't, didn't use much uh, command line. Uh, there was um, C compilers. Um, I used that one, C68. It was a, a, ni a nice one. I used it much. But wh where it becomes interesting, um, a, few year, a few years before that, in, in the year 1990, something really unexpected happened on the Atari. It was Mint. Mint is not TOS, a recursive acronym just like it do. Um, it is a multi, multitasking kernel for the Atari ST. It works on top of TOS, it supports device drivers, it supports alternate, alternate file systems such as Minix X2 from Linux, long file names. Basically, it extends the TOS API with Unix-like features. So it's something which is really, really different from the, the Atari ST. But um, Eric Smith uh, developed it and released it in 1990. In 1992, Atari hired Eric Smith and uh, they added some software to, um, to Mint. A multitasking AES for graphical interface, a multitasking desktop, and um, it was a bit slow, but um, it worked. Then as Mint was um, hired by Atari, uh, it has been renamed to Mint is now TOS. <laughs> Here is a um, multi-TOS working on, on my 4 megabytes uh, Atari STE. Um, it was a bit slow, but uh, it worked. It worked. About compatibility. Um, general, generally, for utilities which respect the, the OS, it works it was really fine. Um, but not all programs <laughs> respect the OS. Um, Mint also has um, memory protection. It's, um, it is not vir virtual memory, but it's uh, a way for processes to not um, crash each other. Oh, sorry, I'm just... Um, I have a, a little keyboard problem. Um, okay. The um, Mintlib. Mintlib is very important. Mintlib is a standard lib library. Um, it provides POSIX API. So um, it is translated at runtime. So it's translated to Mint system calls if, if Mint is available. Otherwise, they, it translates to TOS system calls. So, binaries can automatically take advantage of main features at runtime when available. For example, directory API. Uh, if Mint is present, long file names works. If not, well, uh, short file names still works. The most important thing, most GNU Linux software can be built out of the box for Mint without specific adaptations. So basically, you run uh, configure, make, and it works. And you may, sometimes you may have to patch a few things, but globally it works really fine. And the um, resulting binaries, if, if they don't need an um, advanced feature, they can run in plain TOS, we, even without FreeMint. Um, here you can see still my old 4 megabyte Atari SCE running in, um, maybe it was in 1995, um, with, um, with a bash, the, shell, the real brown, brown against shell, and uh, I use a C68 compiler to compile a simple Hello World. Right, um, a, 
a very Unix-like environment. I, I used it much when I was uh, at school. I used Unix at school, and um, I used uh, that thing at home. In 1997, I stopped using the Atari ST because in, I reached the limits, not enough CPU, so I switched to some dark side. But meanwhile, on the, on the Atari scene, um, the story continued. Atari released the other computer, mainly the Atari TT, and, um, which is in picture, and uh, most of all the Atari Falcon. The Atari company, in, in, 1990, in 1993, it stopped all computer activi activities. The company has been bought several times, and uh, finally it has, it has been bought by Infogram, which has been renamed to Atari, finally. Um, TOS-related software, um, it has been abandoned, but unofficially. So, f so um, the problem is, nowadays, it's, it's not usable legally. So it is uh, the problem of closed source, closed, abandoned source software. The special, the special case of Freemint kernel, it has always provided as open source uh, and supported by the community. It has been renamed as Freemint and put into CVS. Freemint it is really something really important today for the Mint community. Spermint. Spermint is a distribution um, based around RPM package, the, the same as Red Hat, with a Freemint, JCC2, and a UG fort to provide a Unix-like, a complete Unix-like environment for, um, sorry, I clicked. Um, it's, um, well, it's an effort to provide a full Unix-like environment for Atari machines. In uh, around the year 2000, I, um, I was working with C++, and uh, I wanted to use template, advanced, uh, advanced things, and mainly on the Game Boy Advance, because it was a cool machine. But I didn't know either the Game Boy Advance and neither JCC, so I, so I started to train with JCC for the Atari ST. And I never, gave, and I never went back to the Game Boy. <laughs> um, I found um, the work of Patrice on the um, on the web, and uh, it's very important because I could start with uh, with that. What I want to say is, when you do something, publish it so someone someday can can use it again. So he used um, old patches from JCC2 and uh, upgraded them to JCC3. So I took them and I upgraded them to JCC4. It was not, not so easy. Uh, so I, f I working for years um, alone. It was not fun. Uh, upgrading ver versions, fixing many, many bugs, because um, a lot of things. And finally, in 2007, I released the M68K Atari Mint Cross Tools. Uh, with uh, ready to use binaries for Sigwin and uh, JCC4 and all the libraries. You certainly know, know what uh, Sigwin is. It's a full Unix like environment for Windows. That's my favorite Windows software. And I published um, the, the, I made an announce on the, on the news group. And it was the, the, the beginning of my public contributions. If you are interested about uh, the, the, the GCC port for the Atari ST, um, I wrote uh, an article in Software Developer Journal, and um, the full PDF is available on my website. With the community, really, I got very, very good feedback. Um, and someone told me, hey, may go to the Mint mailing list. Oh, what is it? <laughs> and there in the Mint mailing list, I got, uh, pe people told me a lot, a lot of things. Um, and I discovered the artery machines were, were still used. So the main hardware is the Falcon, 
zero thirty. It's um, really um, people are already fan of this machine. It's very very popular, and and mainly the CT sixty accelerator, which which win, which wins um, more speed, etc. Here is the Atari Falcon. It's um, the same look and feel as um, as the Atari ST, but much 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 powerful. This is the um, CT60, the accelerator board um, with um, 68-60 CPU um, and also an extension board and um, many a, much, a bunch of RAM also. Here you can see the Super Vida, which is an extension board for the CT60. It's popular also. There are, there are also USB drivers for USB master, master range. Um, device like, like this, this is a recent one. Um, Cosmos, Cosmos EX, which is a keyboard, um, hard disk, floppy emulator, network emulator for, for Atari machine. I discovered software, hardware, a lot of things. About hardware, there are also Ethernet adapters, um, floppy emulators, um, Keyboard emulators, a lot, a lot of things. Really, people continue making new hardware for that machine. Now about emulators. Um, the main one is Aronim. Aronim means Atari running on any machine. It is a partial uh, Falcon emulator because it focuses on on speed, speed and software compatibility, um, and also it supports native native features which means uh, features implemented uh, natively in the emulator, emulator then used by driver, special drivers in the Atari environment. Other emulators, um, Atari and Steam are very good ones. Um, Atari is mainly interesting because it supports TT and Falcon emulation. Um, not really complete, but um, really good and uh, any combination of uh, hardware uh, CPU you can mix a lot of, a lot of things it's in really interesting here is a um, steam SSC with a um, nice UI Atari with a basic Falcon emulation and um, Aronim here is a very basic um, setup but you will see it's not the main point Aronim, it supports um, extended video modes, um, access to the host file system, network, network support, a lot of things. Here is Emutos. Emutos is my favorite software for the Atari ST. Uh, what is it? It is a free operating system. It is um, ready, it has this, more or less the same functionality as TOS but it is really free software. So it can be expanded, uh, it can be distributed legally. You can see Emutos, the desktop. It, it looks really similar to Atari, Atari one. But the implementation is it's different. Why the UI is um, similar? Because it is based on old gen sources. Atari used these old sources from digital research to make their TOS, but it's still non free. But that old software, at some point of the time, it has been freed. Then the, the Emitos people have taken the source, have filled the gaps, and it became Emitos. It is a very good example of free software. About the main features, but mainly uh, it, it is distrib distributed in ROM, uh, RAM for running on real hardware without changing the ROM. It has a built-in hard disk driver and many, many features. FVDI, what, what is it? It is a new VDI implementation. I told that VDI is it's a graphical layer. FVDI is a new implementation of the layer and it supports external drivers. So um, we can write new drivers to support a new graphical hardware. 
for example, um, <coughs> for Aronim extended video mode. So here you can see Aronim running with Emutos and extended video mode with a lot of plenty of space. Other free software, Terra Desktop. It is an, an extended desktop. Here is Terra Desk, still uh, still um, a bit um, monochrome, but it can support a lot of other things. Xay AES. It is the window with environment. It supports multitasking AES. It is provided by FreeMint and it is still free software. And here you can see. Aronim, Emutos, Freemint, the AES, Tira Desktop. It's a full stack of, sto of free software. Toswin 2, it is a terminal emulator. Uh, and here you can see um, Bash running inside a window. So, a lot of bricks putting all together. There was the Easy Mint installer to um, easy install the Spare Mint distribution. Here is an example in installation with uh, every software, and then you can, you can run uh, several uh, Atari programs simultaneously. When I mean Atari programs, I, I mean old, old or new binaries. Even old programs can be multitasked. And other distributions, Afros, which is also provided as a live CD, the mini pack, which has um, support for PlayStation 3 with Aronim. Vanilla Mint, a very simple distribution, but easy to install on any machine. Easy Mint, which is much pretty, prettier than other ones, because it's not always green. <laughs> um, you can put a um, background desktop, you can, you can change icons, you can surf the web, you can do many things. Biki, which is um, um, a distribution for Raspberry Pi, <laughs> and even Gen2, Gen2 Um So, many, many distributions. A few software, for example, NetSurf, the, the, the famous browser, can run on Freemint. You can see it running and browse the web from an Atari machine or an emulator. GFA Basic Editor, which is still maintained. Taskbar, which is a modern taskbar for Atari systems. My AES, which is another windowing environment um, with a different look and feel, very, very nice. Conholio, which is an alternate terminal emulator. It is based on Linux virtual consoles, so much compatible than other ones. Benchmark, FTP client, video player, music player, Amiga music player, <laughs> and uh, even even Doom running in a window. And uh, my own <laughs> recompiled the software. I I took uh, some packages from Linux and I I did configure, make, and uh, it just it just works. There are also other, f um, other C compilers, AHCC, uh, VBCC, which is multi-platform, um, JCC7, because people have upgraded my, my work. Many, many, many other software. So, what is important, thanks to the community and free software, the Atari ST and its successor still live today. But the story continued, because as I released JCC4, um, it really gave um, a new impulse to, to the community, and um, more things have been poured. The first thing, the first thing people asked me, uh, oh, um, I used uh, this Linux distribution, I would like to have uh, binaries. Okay, so I set up um, a, a Debian um, repository, I rebuilt, um, I, I created um, um, Debian packages, I provided Ubuntu bin binaries, uh, after that I recently I put everything into Ubuntu PPA, so we, there are a lot of binaries. Other people also provided their own binaries for from other systems. Of 
course, uh, it has only been possible because it was free software and, and published, of course. GitHub. This is um, a typical example where new tools can be used for old software. Um, because some projects were in CVS, in CVS, some, some, some other were, weren't uh, at all. Um, and recently, all the projects have moved, have moved to GitHub with uh, all the facilities we, we know, with easy browsing on the web, uh, and also fun his, um, full history. Travis CI, this is really something interesting because it's an automa automatic building tool on the, on the web. And it can be used to, to build, to rebuild everything, to, re to rebuild the, the framing kernel, all the components on each commit. Um, and everything is deployed to um, bin tray. So be before, that, before that, uh, binaries for three minutes were, were complicated to, to get and everyone had to get a compiler to compile it himself. So now, on every commit, everyone can get daily snapshots. So I did the same thing for immutable source, sources, so same thing. Um, when uh, we commit something into emutos, binary snapshots are available immediately. And I also tried the same technique for, for the um, patches for JCC. So on every commit, all you want to PPA or reboot. It's, it's also nice. It's more, it's faster than when I did it, I did it manually. And new hardware projects. The Suska board, it is um, a really nice one because it is um, a full Atari ST in an FPGA. <laughs> um, it just works. Um, and it's open, open software also. The FireB. The FireB is um, a big project. Um, I spent a lot of years of my, li of my life working for the FireB. Basically, it is um, a Falcon compatible computer with a Confire CPU. So, um, how it was done? Basically, it was the, the, the core of the Suska board with an FPGA. The, um, I, will, I will tell you. Here is the FireB board. You have the FPGA for emulation of Atari hardware, the Confire as main CPU, and the PIC, and the PIC for additional tasks. This is open hardware. All the plans are avail available on the web. The Confire, what is it? It is the successor of the 68000, but it isn't fully compatible. Uh, there are missing instructions. You may wonder why. Why are there missing instructions? Legal, legal issues. Uh, no, no legal issues, because it was um, a new CPU which has been sim simplified, because uh, the um, compilers don't compilers don't, don't use some instructions. Uh, so generally, compilers are good enough to use other instructions. So, instructions have been removed to improve the speed. Because all, the, all processors were running at something like 8, uh, 16 uh, megahertz, megahertz. This one is running at um, much, much, much higher, higher frequency. It was um, main, mainly used in embedded systems. For example, there are HP um, printers using that uh, CPU. But as far as I know, um, there is uh, no computer based on this. CPU. And also it's a microcontroller with um, embedded features such as Ethernet, PC, and many, many things. So basically, for the FireB, it was the Suska FPGA core. The 68000 has been removed. Coldfire has been used instead. And it has been modified to emulate Falcon hardware instead of um, ST1. About the operating system, um, there are two ones, um, Emutos and FireTOS. 
Just a word about the, the Fire Bee. It isn't a full Falcon. The, the, the main goal is to make a full Falcon emulation. But uh, for example, the Falcon has a DSP, which is uh, very fast and uh, difficult to emulate. That DSP is, um, isn't emulated by the Fire Bee. There were also a few, some, some bugs. So it, is not, it isn't fully functional, but it's the main, the main goal. So the operating system. Emutos is completely Codefire native. But there is no 68,000 emulation. FireTOS has partial emulation and advanced hardware, hardware support. So, how to make Emutos work on the Falcon? Emutos is compatible with Falcon. It has always been compatible with Falcon. Um, the FireB is a Falcon with a Coldfire CPU. So, just add Coldfire support into Emutos. And this was my, my main task in 2009. I had to patch assembler files, modify all the libraries, Emutos, Freemint kernel, etc. But it took time, but it worked fine. So, um, why Emutos doesn't support uh, 68,000 emulation? Because I, I wanted to run everything native. Just so um, I wanted everything to be fast with no emulation. Uh, of course, so the emulators can run all binaries, but if you recompile uh, binaries from from Coldfire, they can run on emulators at full speed, and also on FireTOS <coughs> fully optimized. FireTOS. Uh, it's the main OS of the FireB because uh, of ad advanced features. Um, it has um, partial 68 <coughs> emulation with um, a library. Um, basically, it's a patch. It's authoritos which has been patched and uh, okay. binary patched with um, extended extended video modes. It supports uh, USB keyboards. Um, it's it's uh, nice. It's very nice. I already talked about, about uh, compatibility, about Freemint. Here is a typical code file patch. Uh, this is a solution, the solution I, I chose. It's, it uses an um, ugly preprocessor, yes, it's dev. It's ugly, but it works really, really well. It was, I, it, I think it was um, the best solution. For example, here, the um, Addressing mode pre-decrementation pre isn't support on the code fire for the mobile instruction. So the solution is to to do it with another instruction just before. Don't so do so for every line of incompatible code. Here is my my own setup with uh, emitters running on the fire. Bit. Um, you can see um, the FireB board because um, I don't have a case, um, and I use a Nifel adapter um, for to use a PS2 keyboard and mouse uh, and convert it into Atari keyboard. Um, so this, this is uh, the standard um, Falcon resolution running in, in 16 colors. The same, but with FreeMint. Freemint patching for code file. You can see it's the same same as Aronim. It could be more pretty. Just a, a nice hack. It's a 68k emu. Because um, emutos for code file, I told you it can't it can't run um, 60 old 68k binaries. So the the idea the idea was to um, emulate user user program using a CPU software emulator, then switch to the real CPU for running the operating system. So a CPU switch when entering the, the kernel mode. Simple, simple idea, but it work, it's limited, but it works fine. I was surprised it worked, um, it actually worked. Putting it together again. This is the official Fire, um, the official framing setup for the for the Fire So I, I just um, downloaded it, put it on a compact flash, compact flash board, 
then I could surf on the, the Force North website. <laughs> <laughs> But the more interesting part is exotic hardware, my favorite one. The Kiwi board. It is not an Atari machine, but it's um, a computer based on 68,008. And um, the authors of this board ported Intos to, to it. So free software can, can run on new hardware. The Mist board, it is very, very popular nowadays. It is, a FPGA, it is an FPGA board based, um, which it can run many core, um, the Atari ST, the Amiga, old 8-bit computers, and uh, even consoles. It's um, popular hardware. Mister, it is um, a clone of the Mist. Um, it, it's uh, cheaper. Cold Fire evaluation board. I, I really love uh, that hardware because it can run Emutos and FreeMint in text mode because it doesn't have a um, um, graphic output through a um, in a terminal. And um, I used it to debug um, Emutos for Cornfire when the Firebee wasn't available. Um, This board was also used by him to debug, to create FireTOS, because it was uh, another project. It was uh, the City PCI project. Um, it was an add-on for the City 60 board. And uh, as Didier, Didier needed to, um, to debug his code, um, he, he worked on, the, on this board. So um, different board, different hardware, different CPU, but um, he, he managed it to to go forward with this hardware. And also, he made, he made a, a driver for 80 Radeon PC cards. It's, it's truly amazing. Here, here is Emutos running in a terminal. Um, so basically, I routed all the text output to the serial, serial port. And uh, here, I can, re I can run um, software, text, um, text mode software. But as, as the CPU is cold fire, I can only run um, cold fire text mode soft Atari software. So it's a bit limited. But um, it's nice enough to run FreeMint, bash, put an SSH server connected to the board through SSH, etc. Um, easy to say, but it was, there was many challenges because it was a new CPU support for non-Atari non hardware because Immutos used, used um, on the Atari hardware and um, add support for foreign hardware. But it, but it worked. For FreeMint it was actually easier because it depends on the underlying bias. So if you, you make a clean port of Immutos, FreeMint will just run out of the box. For example, today, um, FreeMint binaries for Coldfire can, can run on the Firebee or on um, the evolution, evolution board, same binaries. Do you, do you know that machine? This is the Amiga, it's the, the enemy of the Atari ST, the main competitor. Yeah. But it's the Atari one. Atari has FreeMint. And, yeah, and, no, sorry, no, sorry, not one. and now Atari has also a Mutos. Um, because it was, it was quite hard to, to make uh, a Mutos work on the Coltrane ev evaluation board. So um, I told myself um, that uh, it would be much easier to port it to Amiga. So I, I didn't know Amiga at all. So I. I took the Commodore documentation and I read it, and in a um, very few time, it worked on the Amiga because documentation is very good. And it was not so hard because um, Emutos was already patched for non-Atari hardware, so it's the same for the Amiga. Um, it was complicated on the evaluation board because it had a Coldfire processor, 
but uh, Amiga has a, a, a normal 68,000 CPU. Um, and the, the main point, I, I, I saw a video on the net where I saw that um, the Ami, Amiga was compatible with the, with the Atari STI video mode. Uh, so I got all the elements and it just worked. Um, I, I used some routines from Aros. Aros is a free uh, operating system for the Amiga. Uh, compatible to Amiga OS, uh, maybe um, mainly floppy driver because it's um, a bit tricky to write a floppy driver for the Amiga. Um, it worked well, but uh, I couldn't release the binaries because the two projects use different licenses. It's very sad because both are open source, but not with the same licenses. So. Um, I started uh, replacing the Aros routine with uh, new ones. Um, I, I, have built, I have done the floppy routines, uh, but I need, I need to do the other ones. About compatibility, well, uh, for software, using just the OS, it, it just works. Uh, but of course, software, like games, which go directly to the hardware, to the Atari hardware, it, it can't work, it doesn't work. So uh, most utilities works, but most games, uh, uh, almost no games work. Still on the Amiga, who knows um, the, this board, the Vampire board? Uh, it's a cool one. On the, Ami on the Amiga Sen nowadays, there are much efforts for this board, the Vampire V2. It, it supports the 60,080 CPU. It is not a real CPU, it is a um, CPU emulation in an FPGA. Um, it's by far the fastest 68,000 hardware compatible CPU. And um, it is on this board, and of course it is supported by Emutus. I haven't, I haven't bought an Amiga, the one, the one you saw. I haven't bought an Amiga and a, van, and a Vampire card to support it. Um, but why, why I did it? Because maybe, maybe someday the, some, the, that board maybe work on a Atari machine. So it was, a, it was worth the effort to buy uh, the Amiga if it could go back to the Atari machine. Um, the Vampire has also an HD, HDMI output. Um, but it, it requires a special driver. So I just wrote, and I, ju I just wrote an FVDI driver for Saga. So the result is something like this. Um, it's still the old Immutos on, on the behind the scene. Immutos, Freemint, AES, and non-standard non Atari software. The, the same old binaries running on Amiga just like the best Atari emulator at full speed. Um, this is um, the Amitari distribution which <laughs> Ste because it's a bit complicated to, to put everything together and um, Stefan has, has created this distribution. Just unpack and use. Does God approve of this? <laughs> <laughs> yes. so I, I approve of this. I love mixing. I love. You could call me Dr. Frankenstein. <laughs> 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 um, about FVD drivers, I, lo I also made one for Win UAE, the Amiga emulator. So the same thing, but to, to run. Um, all the Atari free software on UAE. Uh, you can put, uh, of course, a nice background, etc. But it's my setup with um, with green background, like Atari. <laughs> <laughs> so, if uh, I, I could ask for something, but free all software. The, some some of the companies have free the software. It's it's very nice effort because it's the only only way to keep software alive. 
So, in conclusion, if, if the ordinary software, ordinary operating system are still alive today, it is not because of um, Atari, which has abandoned everything, but because of free software and the community. So this can continue. And finally, if you enjoyed uh, what I've shown, you can subscribe to my new YouTube cha channel, where I, I decided to show everything step by step. It will take um, some years. But um, <laughs> I started with the boring thing, and the cool stuff start to, to come. So That's what is it called V Retro Computer? But it's my name, it's my initials. Oh, okay, okay. VR. Okay. That's all. Thank you for um, hearing. <laughs> Any question? So yeah, the, I didn't look at, at the time. Uh, Seven minutes left until FIKA, so it's plenty of time good. for questions. I already see one from the Amiga guy. So where did you hide it? <laughs> yes. Where did you hide it from the Amiga users when you did that? Where? Where, where did you hide from the Amiga users? <laughs> I, I didn't hide. I, I go to the... I register to Amiga forums and, hey, look at that. There, are, there is Atari software on your machine. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Some of them said, oh, and, and the other ones said, oh, most of ones said, oh, that, that's cool. It's um, just base, same ship set. Yeah, exactly. There are actually very, very similar machines. Oh. Will it run on the new Atari that is coming? Uh, the new Atari will be uh, basically a PC. Yeah. Uh, so maybe if someone ports um, an emulator, so, such as Aronim to the new Atari console. Yeah. Why, why, um, it works for the PS3, so it would work for the new Atari console if if it if it supports uh, Linux. Actually, Atari promises that the machine will be open to do it. Uh, people they want to do it to emulate so, things. So if it is open, it will work. Run an Atari and PC inside an Atari. That sounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like this, I could. Um, I, I showed you. Um, I showed you um, Atari. Uh, Atari is uh, Atari emulator. But um, Atari is highly portable. Atari uses the SDL library. But someone had ported SDL library for Freemint. And uh, I, I recompiled Atari for Freemint. To an, 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 an Atari emulator inside um, an Atari machine. <laughs> <laughs> so so it, well, it, it works, but um, SDL is, there are some, some bugs which prevent it to be usable, and also it's really, really, really slow. So um, it's not really usable, but, but it works. We should have Kubernetes. Now you orchestrate your virtual <laughs> Atari. Yes, everything Atari. works in containers, yeah. <laughs> and also about emulators, it was um, quite amazing, for example, um, DOSBox running uh, inside Freemint, inside Aronim, because Aronim is really fast. Um, but Aronim is, uh, isn't still, f isn't faster enough to run, DOS, to run DOSBox normally. I I played something like Pac-Man or all those games inside Aronim, inside the, inside the double emulator. But not not usable. Did this run on the original hardware? Ah yes, because it's uh, the rule. Original hardware is um, the test case. So uh, if if it doesn't work on the original hardware, it isn't. Um, it isn't. You, you can you can prove it is good. For example, about, about Immutos. Um, Immutos. Is mainly used with emulators, but um, if, the emulator, if the emulator is wrong, emulators may work by chance. Um, so uh, we, we 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 test, we try emulators on real hardware um, by uh, making a program and running it on the Atari. This is it is what I call the RAM version because you don't have to to, to remove your ROM. Um, but it also worked as well, and um, there are some people, uh, not not much, but uh, I, I know two of two of them, <coughs> who have uh, replaced the Atari the, the ROM of the Atari ST by Immutos to prove it works at, on cold boot. 
and um, we had we had to fix uh, three things because um, you know running s an operating system on core boot is something quite difficult because you have to initialize all the hardware and um, especially when you start there is no memory at all you have to in initialize the, the RAM the RAM controller etc and it was actually buggy in Immutus so someone tried it in real ROM uh, found the bug and contributed. And now it works on real hardware as cold boot. I now see one person who has removed the one of the Amiga to put Immutos instead and it, it worked. I, I don't recommend doing that. Doing that. <laughs> but it worked. For running uh, Immutos on, on Amiga currently, I this, was, this is because I don't have the network enabled. They click. Um, I recommend to use uh, Immutos for Amiga floppy. It's just simple, just like like a game. You you take the um, uh, Immutos, you put it on a floppy, an, an Amiga floppy. You, you put it on the drive, you power on, power on, and you have um, Immutos running on your Ami on your Amiga, just like a game. Very easy. One person. Thank you. And, uh,